looking at the magnificent tower, it's difficult to believe that in 1711, substantial parts of it, the south and east, fell down and were repaired with stone from the medieval abbey. There's evidence inside the tower of a former arched window. The tower was also remodelled slightly in the 1860s when the striking new pitch roof was installed. We've got eight bells here. The biggest one is about 11 and a quarter hundred weight. I think our oldest bell is 1654, which would be about Oliver Cromwell's time. And our newest bell was 2004. The bells hang like this normally and must be turned to their starting position before they can be properly rung. This is done by slowly turning the bell until it builds momentum and can be swung round to its resting position, ready for the ringers to begin ringing. During the ringing the bells turn one way then the other. To prevent the bells turning all the way round there's a piece of wood called a stay which catches onto a slider and acts as a safety mechanism should the bell tip too far over. When we're ringing, we have three types of ringing really. One is general call, rounds and call changes. The, what we first learn when we're ringing the bells, so one bell follows the other all the way around. Once the bell ringers are a bit more proficient, they can start ringing methods. And this is sequence, following a set sequence. And there's hundreds and hundreds of these set sequences. Third way of ringing is peel ringing. This can take up to three, four hours for one peel, ringing every combination of changes that you can with the number of bells that you have. For over 140 years, the clock at Polesworth Abbey has kept time for the community. Before railway travel, the time was slightly different across the UK as clocks were adjusted from a sundial, which varied due to the position of the sun. Railways needed to keep to timetables, and so standard time was created. The poles with clock and hour striking mechanism were made by Leeson and son of Colesville in Warwickshire and installed in 1876. These pulleys used to hold the heavy weights that were wound twice weekly to keep the clock working. This was replaced with an automatic system in the 1980s. The pendulum swings to keep the time accurate and if the clock is slow or fast it's adjusted by clock keeper Michael Allsop. This adjustment is for when the clock is behind time and this for when it's ahead of time. There's a separate mechanism for the chimes which was built by Smiths of Derby and installed in 1896. When the clock chimes a series of levers are activated which are attached to hammers which then strike the bells. The number of chimes is governed by this notched wheel. Well, the organ actually works uh, through air and pipes. There are, I guess, over a thousand pipes in the organ altogether. The air goes up through there and produces the sound. So if I blow in the bottom, I give you some idea. 
the air is produced by a blower. When you press a note, it opens the slider and allows the air to go through the pipe uh, and that produces a sound. Well, playing the organ is a bit like playing the piano insofar as the keys are the same, the notes are the same, but the technique is different. A note will only sound for as long as the finger is on the note. The foot pedals are laid out in exactly the same way as the, the keyboard. You use your heel and your toe on the notes in order to get a variety of different sounds. When you press down a stop, it allows the air to go to in a certain direction in the organ. When I press the key down, it produces, the air goes through that one pipe, basically. If I press an extra stop down, it's going through two pipes, and so on. A variety of different pipes, the same time um, and then of course if I play more than one note at once it's going through multiple numbers of pipes at the same time on this organ you've got three uh, manuals here you've got the swell which is the top the middle is called the the great and the bottom is called the choir the organ recently underwent a thorough cleaning, some minor repairs and retuning to ensure its beautiful sound fills the church for many years to come.